Are you recording? Yes. What are you doing? Typing a sentence? Stop it. Please. You are listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat's Worst. No, no, no. Second worst. Oh, really? What? Okay, there, there so it's not one, as bad. Yeah, there was one that was much worse. Oh, well, okay. The second worst marathon ever. That's right. To, uh, today and this, throughout the course of this marathon, we've been going through the rules of Pixar storytelling. Uh, so that was rule number eight. What do you think? I, I agree. Let's look at Ratatouille on that one. <laughs> I do remember <laughs> at least one of those in Ratatouille because it was all about food. Uh, rule number eight. Finish your story let go, even if it's not perfect. In an ideal world, you would have both, but move on. Do better next time. Again! That's a really interesting rule, because that sounds a whole lot like a Dean Wesley Smith slash a Heinlein slash Ellison rule. When you finish your story, move on. Don't rewrite, which is weird, because she already said to rewrite. <laughs> in an earlier rule, but uh, yeah, that's you know, right, write right, right. a better story next time. Apply what you learned in your next story. Don't go back and polish and polish and polish and polish and polish until it doesn't resemble anything. I, but read it again. That's why I shouted again. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of a weird rule. I'm, I'm not okay, but I, especially but, applying this to Pixar and film writing. It's weird, but finish your story. Let go, even if it's not perfect. In an ideal world, you would have both, but move on. Do better next time. What is both? I think it is a finished and perfect story. That's all I can figure. Because yeah, that is a, is a weird thing. What okay, is finish your story. Move on. Even if it's not perfect. Those are three things. The most important of those three for us is finish your story. Right. And then, yeah, Dean Silvestri Smith's big thing is move on. And even if it's not perfect, okay, that one is hard. I, I know we've talked about it, but reiterate what he says about going back and rewriting and a second draft and then yeah, a third draft. And don't keep draft. polishing. His thing is that... You have a voice that's your special, you know, the, the thing that makes your story sound like it's written by you and not written by anybody else. And that really comes through. And his, his little analogy is always that you have two minds in there. You have a creative mind and then you have a critical mind. And your critical mind is best, but generally your enemy it's the thing that says, oh, this isn't good enough, and you need to do uh, something else, and there's a bridge. Why don't you jump off of it? Whereas your creative mind is where you, your story and all that stuff is coming from. And when you're rewriting, you're not using your creative mind. You're using your critical mind and saying, oh, this isn't good enough, and this needs to change, and that needs to change, and this needs to change. And this word, maybe I should use a different word. Etc. Etc. Whereas with your creative mind, you're just in the story and you're writing, and the story is kind of flowing out of you or something. That's his whole what he says happens in the creative process, and he wants you to stick with your creative mind, and so he doesn't want you to rewrite it and rewrite it and put it out there for a committee to go over it and then say you should do this because when it's done, it doesn't sound like you. It's not unique. It's not special. It's not in your voice. It's just like everyone else. Therefore, much more bland. And I can understand that. And I like it because it seems like less work to uh, just write the story and then be done with it. And you can look at it and see things and say, oh, this is what's weak. And in his mind, he doesn't say, go back and fix this weak thing. He says, Improve that. Make that your goal in the next story. Okay, I'm going to make sure that my ending isn't weak this time. It's going to be the strong point. So I'm going to make sure I get that ending before uh, 
heading into it or something like that. That's what he says, which seems almost exactly like what she said in her Pixar rule here, where write to it to the end, finish it, and then let it go and do better the next time. And just, I guess, write, because writing is where you get that practice. I have no idea how the Pixar aspect of this uh, fits in hand in hand with Dean Wesley Smith. Because <laughs> yeah. Dean Wesley Smith, I mean, this, that's the thing that I most disagree with him about, of all things. I and mean, he once said that the earth revolves around the moon. And I still disagree more with the, uh, the don't rewrite, move on thing. And I have a unique perspective, kids. Uh, <laughs> but look, a Pixar movie, you got to have 50 things. Uh, this is Dean Wesley Smith's attitude. You have to have 50 things out there this year. And so just write and write and write and write and put this out and sell it and put out the next one and sell it. And if you know something is weak, who cares? Fix it in the next one. Have the next one not be weak. And you know that there's something that doesn't – the ending absolutely sucks in this one? Well, who cares? Let's have the ending be better in the next book. And all that, but a Pixar movie, at least most of the time, the, the the people that work on these Pixar movies have one movie every three years or something like that that they, they, they're working on, and it might be even longer than three years. But you know, I wouldn't have been surprised if uh, the Good Dinosaur started pre-production in like 2007, 2008. You know what I mean? And it's taken all this time for us finally to get to the movie where it's done, and it's. It's to the point where it's just like, okay, it's not perfect, but you have to move on and apply the things that you learned in The Good Dinosaur to, you know, whatever the next project is that you're working on, Toy Story 4. But see, I just when there's hundreds of millions of dollars at stake or billion dollars of potential revenue for Disney, how do you not just go back and rewrite and rewrite and look over and, and say, okay, I think we talked about... The original version of Wally, the original finished version of Wally, versus what we saw in 2007 or whenever Wally came out. If you watch the DVD or the Blu-ray, you get like the last 20 minutes in their original version, and it's it's fine, it's great, it's moving and it's good. Where uh, Wally is able to save Eve and and go through, and he, oh, he suffers through all this stuff to save her life, and then she's okay, and they they're in love at the end, and the credits roll, and you're like, wow, that's awesome. But then you see the real the the Wally that we got in the theaters, where it's Wally that is bruised and battered and destroyed, and then Eve has to do all this stuff to save Wally, and it is better. It's more perfect. It's <laughs> and. I would never I, – when I first watched that, I was like, dude, this is better than anything anybody else is putting out. And you said this wasn't good enough? Anyway, so I guess I'm, I'm disagreeing. But you have to move on at some point. Otherwise, yeah. these movies would take 10 years to come out. Yeah, be like never Legend Avatar 2, which will be a decade after Avatar 1 by the time it finally comes out. Yeah, it's, I think it is kind of like that. I think that's what they're saying is sooner or later you have to give it up and move on. You know, with Pixar, they have a release date. And so you get it ready for the release date. And you can't just be like, oh, well, I know it's supposed to come out in July. And we've had all this trailers that say July. But let's just bump it to uh, December. Because I think we might be able to make it a little better uh, if we have another six months. They're going to say, yeah, sorry, Good Dinosaur comes out six months from now. So you can't make it a little better. You're just going to have to go with Inside Out as you have it. And that's just good enough and you can improve the next one. But yeah, one of his rules is, you know, publish your, your stuff, which I think kind of goes along with that. You know, you got to publish it. You got to, you can't just... You know, oh, this is really good, but I, I, I think I might be able to make it better. It's you got to put it out there. Eventually, you just got to let it go. You're not writing the stories for yourself. You're writing the stories for everyone, and then you just go out there, and then you just need to move on. It's like, I don't know, one of your children or something like that. You got to let them grow up and be adults. You can't keep them under your wing in the nest forever. But the thing is, if you know there's a weakness to your story, how do you just let that go? 
So, okay, I know that the female protagonist is really one-dimensional and kind of a (laughs) C-word. So if I sat down and tried to bring a little bit more dimension to her and soften her rough edges a little bit, I would be more satisfied and the reader would be more satisfied. Why would you not do that? Because the first time somebody said, oh, I bought your book, I hated the girl. She was kind of a C-word. You're going to go, oh, yeah, I, I, you knew, you knew before you hit publish that she was a C word, dude. Okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I, I can see I, that. I disagree if it's with that, Dean Wesley Smith. If it's that obvious, then yeah, you should fix it. But if it's, if you just keep like, read, oh, I gotta, uh, let me read it one more time and see if there's anything else. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, maybe I should just change this around and this thing. And then, okay, I'm just going to read through it one more time before I send it out. Just make sure there's not something that I, oh, maybe I should change this and this and that. You know, eventually, you have to stop saying, I'm going to read it one more time. You have to move on eventually. You can't just keep going forever and ever. Right, but he would say, publish it and And make sure that your next next girl is not a C word. He would say that if he were here in this room. And I guess what we talk about, it just takes one story that somebody buys her book and they hate to say, yeah, I'm not going to read his stuff anymore. Right? I suppose so. Yeah. So you do want to make sure it's good. It's it's hard because the truth is probably in between. The truth of whether you should continue to polish and fix it. Now I found another error or another... Not error, but another weakness of the story that it would only take a month to fix. And you got to the end, publish. It seems like the the sweet spot is somewhere in between. Okay, I can see that. I don't know. But there's never been a Pixar movie, not even Tin Toy, that got made from the first draft of the script. Right. Yeah, I I don't think that's what she's saying in the rule. I think she's just saying you have to move on when it's done. And maybe it's not perfect, but... Maybe this is for the animators. Yeah, I mean, for whoever. Eventually, a release date arrives, you know what I'm saying? Especially with Pixar, where their release dates are all scheduled years in advance. And unless there's something crazy like The Good Dinosaur or Newt, they're not just going to blow it up. And start over, you know, they're, and, and change the release date. They're going to keep it where it's at, and they're just going to say, okay, this has to be good enough. Now, it, around the time that this comes out, Good Dinosaur will be coming out. And I wonder how many people will mention the troubles with that and the other director and the firing and all that stuff. And when the DVD comes out, will we get a chance to see some of the other version and, and find out whether that was right or not? Or is that something that Disney tends to brush under the the rug like they did Kingdom of the Sun? Or, yeah, you might have to wait for many years in the future before you ever book. get that version of events. The 20 and 20th anniversary version of it might be when you finally find out. Well, okay, if, if, if it's not just the story department, but the animation department that gets these rules... And they're, you're working on Bonnie from Toy Story 3. And it's like, there's still something wrong with the nose. We've gone through 14 iterations of Bonnie. And the nose still isn't quite... And they'll be like, sorry, you have to be done. What's the main character? Work on Riley in Inside Out. That's your next project. See if you can fix the nose there. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So that's rule number eight. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, We'll be back again tomorrow with another rule. Maybe. Ciao, baby. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. And... That's just good enough, and you can improve the next one. You know, it's 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 kind of, I guess, like that. And that's another one of those, Dean, or, I guess, yeah, I, holy crap, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Did we talk about 
Dean Wesley Smith in this episode yet? Yeah, of course we did. Okay. <laughs> um, because, you know, he's, he, you said that her point They're completely... They're starting to run together. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. But this was the episode where I started to reveal that I do Dean Wesley Smith's audiobooks, and they're terrible. But he doesn't have to spend three months polishing this turd like I do. Okay. So back on this show. No, no, that is this show. <laughs> You're going to leave that in. I don't know. I don't it. care at this point. Um, anyways, 